So do any of y'all know what a clodhopper is? I always thought of it as a big shoe, and that's what the dictionary says too, but also a foolish, awkward, clumsy person. But what I didn't know until today is that the clodhopper is also a pretty cool fly pattern. Now I found this one in a book recommended by Ruben Amador. It's called Tying Flies Like a Pro by Marty Bartholomew. And I'm probably gonna add this to my stack of books that I'm reviewing because I'm really liking this one so far. Okay, so about this pattern. It was created by a guy named Paul Stimson of Utah. Now, Paul is a pretty well-known fly tire in Western circles. He's been a commercial fly tire for many years. He's been an instructor, he's been on Whiting's pro staff, and he traveled with Gary LaFontaine for a few years before he passed away. So Paul has been in or around this business for many years. And he's got a few fly patterns to his name. This one I'm tying today was originally called a red-legged hopper, but he made a few modifications over the years and he made enough of them to give it a new name and he named it after his good friend Claude Ashby. Now I've never tied or fished this pattern, but there are a couple of characteristics about it that I really like. First off, it's really easy to tie. And then the second thing is that it doesn't have so much foam in it that it's just gonna float like a cork. Have you ever had a fish that just goes up and slaps at your hopper? It's not really trying to eat it. Maybe it's just trying to drown it a little bit. Um, if they do that and then the fly just pops right back to the surface, well, it doesn't really look natural and you might turn that fish off. But this one today, I don't think it's gonna have that problem. Now, I really won't know that until I go out and fish it, but I do have a good feeling about this one. It's a cool pattern. I think you're gonna like it. Let's give it a shot. So there it is in the vise, a clod hopper by Paul Stimson. Pretty cool little pattern. Now, sizes for this, as big as a six and as small as a 12 is what Stimson says. I'm gonna tie it on the small end. This is a 10 and this is pretty much my favorite go-to hopper hook. It's a Jay Stockard 430. It's actually a three extra long. You don't need a three extra long, but I really like this curved shank hook on it. And I'm using brown thread for this one, so let's go ahead and lay a base down to about where the point used to be. Now this one uses tan two millimeter foam. So I cut a strip, about a hook gap right here, and I did cut the corners off of the end right there so that I get, you know, a little bit more of an abdomen shape. So let's catch it in right there. Not an insignificant tail. And I forgot to mention, I'm using a 70 denier thread. If you find yourself cutting your, your foam with a 70 denier, you might wanna step it up to a 140 or maybe even a, a six aught. And I'm gonna put several wraps underneath it and over it. Just try to keep it from spinning because it will have a tendency to want to spin. Okay, so there's my tail, I'm fine with that. Now this next two thirds, we're gonna just wrap up this body right here. And this one doesn't have to be real neat. And I'm not, I'm trying not to squish this down too much. You know, we could really bind it in close to the hook, but if you don't and you leave a little bit of air in this foam, you know, you're gonna have a little bit more, I guess it'll float a little bit better. So about like that, I think is gonna look fine. So the next thing we're gonna catch in is what we're gonna rib up, just a brown hackle. And you'll wanna pick one that I don't know, it's about a hook gap maybe. This one might be just a little bit short, but I'm gonna go with it. And if you end up with a, you know, just a little bit longer than a hook gap for your Palmer tackle, I think that's gonna be just fine. So let's go ahead and catch it in and we could have snipped that stem off if we wanted to, but I just buried it. So now let's put some wax on our thread and then brown dubbing. So I think any brown dubbing is gonna be fine here. This is a rabbit, but synthetic would work just fine as well. A super fine would be great. Really anything you have in this Coachman Brown, I think is gonna be just fine. Okay, that's pretty thin, but you know what? I think we're gonna be fine because a lot of that's gonna be hidden when we polymer this up. So just go ahead and wrap this up and oh, as close together as you want. I think it's gonna be fine. It's, this does help it float. It doesn't keep it real dry, but it will, will certainly give it some flotation and then the foam will do the rest for you. Okay, next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and 
take my thread up and then I'm going to create a little flat spot right here. This is where we're going to catch in our wing, right at the front of that palmer tackle. So I'm building a little base right here, it's going to be fine. And our wing, it's just a, a medium sized clump of elk hair. Let's see if this stacked very well right here. Yeah, I think that stacked just fine. All right, and let's do this. I'd say about a body length, maybe just a little bit short. Watch that, keep it from spinning. And this is gonna flare on you, and that's fine because we can push it down with when we fold this foam back over if we need to. So that's flared up a little bit, but I'm perfectly okay with that. A couple of wraps going forward. These are some pretty tight wraps right here. Now let's snip off all this excess up forward. All right, I think we're fine there. And you don't have to get it real short um, because we can bury this right here. Now, one thing I'm doing that the original didn't do, I'm gonna put a little bit of dubbing on here before I catch in my legs. It's just gonna hide some of these unsightly wraps. I think this would be perfectly optional and uh, up to you if you wanna do this or not. It's, it's gonna add about 30 seconds to your tie, but I think it will make it just a little bit cleaner. Now let's catch in the legs. And the original pattern does say a red leg, but it actually looked brown in the picture. So I tied one with the brown and I thought, eh, this this rust colored pumpkin barred leg looks pretty cool. So I'm using this uh, just because I have it and I think it looks pretty cool. And I folded it over. I'm gonna put a couple of loose wraps right here and then just adjust my position. I want them coming off directly off the side here. Okay, those are coming off the side just fine. So I'm gonna hold it in and then put a few tighter wraps to just really lock them in. Now, before I fold that wing back, I'm gonna go ahead and trim these legs. The back one's kind of long out there to the back of the body, I would say. And then the front ones, they're gonna be a little bit shorter. Okay, so what do we think on the front? How about that right there? Okay, so kind of Madame X style right there. But we're almost done, one more step. It's gonna be keep your thread in the back right there fold this over and you can fold it over tight if you want kind of up to you like that or you can get a little bit of a, a bump if you want a bigger head let's say that part is totally up to you I'm gonna put a couple of loose wraps right here and then several more just to lock it in and I'm gonna go ahead and whip finish it right there where my thread is Now obviously this foam is too long, so just reach in here and cut it off a little bit past, just behind that, those thread wraps, and there we go. And I may have a little bit of cleanup. I've got one crazy elk hair sticking down right there. But other than that, it's a pretty cool looking pattern, certainly not hard to tie. So I appreciate you watching everybody. Y'all take care and we'll see you next time.